Hello, good evening and welcome to this in the world. I am Tine Tim Hoki bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include Election Commission of India directs first polls at 11 polling stations on April 22nd. Repolls for 11 polling stations in Valley districts conducted. News in details. The Election Commission of India has under Section 58.2 and 58A.2 of the Representation of the People Act 1951 directed that the poll taken on 19 April 2024 Friday in respect of 11 polling stations in one inner Manipur parliamentary constituency to be void and appointed 22nd April 2024, Monday, as the date for taking fresh poll at the state polling stations with hours of poll from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The polling stations slated for report included 3 by 11 Sajib A and 3 by 21 Hurai Tong. Tongam Lekai under Hurai Assembly constituency. 4 by 43 Bamom Kampu North A, 4 by 44 Bamom Kampu North B, 4 by 45 Bamom Kampu Southwest, and 4 by 46 Bamom Kampu Southeast under Setrigao Assembly segment. 5 by 31 Khoman John 5A under Tongzu Assembly segment. 10 by 1 Eroi Semba, 10 by 6 Eroi Semba Mamang Leikai, and 10 by 7 Eroi Semba Mayai Leikai under Europok Assembly constituency, 18 by 22 Haidem Maha polling station under Kong Tongzam Assembly segment. The Chief Electoral Officer Pradip Kumarja has appealed all voters of the polling stations to come out in large numbers to exercise their franchise. With Poll rigging violence vandalism of electronic voting machines reported in the Inner Manipur Parliamentary Constituency, the Chief Electoral Officer Manipur had earlier recommended the necessity for holding fresh polls in several polling stations in Manipur. The recommendation comes amidst the complaint filed by Manipur Pradesh Congress Committee demanding fresh polls in 36 polling stations in the Inner Manipur Parliamentary seat. It is worth mentioning that the Manipur Pradesh Congress Committee on April 19 had written to the CEO Manipur for reports in 36 polling stations under 11 assembly segments. As per the letter, the polling stations which fall under 11 assembly constituencies, including Haingang SC, Horai SC, Setrigao SC, Tongzu SC, Kairau SC, Andro SC, Yaiskol SC, Sekmai SC, Kong Tauzam SC, Oinam SC, Moirang AC and Suknu AC. The General Secretary Admin MPCC in its letter to CEO Manipur stated that the state polling booths were found to be captured by armed miscreants and most of the polling booths were rigged, proxy voting, forced voting and disruption by irred mob as a result of irregularities. In respect to Hurai AC, the MPCC stated that one person was injured in a gunfire by armed miscreants. Many voters were also threatened in the polling station. Number 3 by 11 of 3 Hurai AC, in polling station 5 by 32 of 5 Tongzu AC, the voters of the INC candidate were threatened out by the rival group. Some armed miscreants also carried out proxy voting and polling agents of INC candidate were threatened and expelled, expelled out from the polling stations. Number 6 by 29 of 6 K Rao, AC and number 7 by 38 of 7 Andro AC. In another incident, it was also reported that there was a mismatch of the numbers of votes cast in EVM and VVPAT in the polling station. Number 14 by 18 of 14 Yai School AC. In this regard, the Congress boot agent of the state polling station has lodged a complaint to the presiding officer for re poll. Meanwhile, in polling station number 18 by 22 of 18 Kong Tauzam AC. The voters were denied to exercise casting of their votes and almost all the votes were casted by armed miscreants. In polling station number 25 by 1 and 25 by 2 of 25 Oinam AC, the voters were illegally forced to vote against their will by armed miscreants. 
A repoll was conducted today for 11 polling stations where various illegal practices were carried out during the first phase of inner parliamentary constituency election, which was conducted on the 19th of April. As per information given by the Election Commission, 11 polling station conducts repolling today from 7 a.m. till 5 p.m. since various miscreants capture votes and destroy EVM on the day of election. The places where repolling was conducted are under 3 Hurai AC jurisdiction, Moirang Campus Sajep Upper Primary School Polling Station, and S. Ibobi Primary School East Wing Polling Station at 3 by 11 Sajep A under 4 Setrigao AC jurisdiction, Bamom Kampu Upper Primary School at 4x43 4 Bam Bamon Kampu North A. Pioneer Academy Polling Station under 4x44 4 Bamon Kampu North B. Under High School North Wing Polling Station, Irilbung High School North Wing Polling Station under 4x45 Bamon Kampu Southwest. Irilbung High School South, South Wing under 4x46 Bamon Kampu Southeast. National Children's School Polling Station at 5 by 31 Homan John VA under 5 Tongzu AC. Eroy Semba Upper Primary School Eastern Wing Polling Station at 10 by 1 Eroy Semba under 10 Europok AC. Eroy Semba Upper Primary School Western Wing Polling Station at 10 by 6 Eroy Semba Mamang Leikai. Eroy Semba Upper Primary School Middle Wing Polling Station at 10 by 7 Eroy Semba Mayang Leikai and Haidem Primary School Southern Wing Polling Station at 8 by 22 Haidem Maha under 18 Kong Tongzam AC jurisdiction respectively. Unlike the previous polling, no disturbances were reported at today's polling. Some of the other polling stations which reports conflicts and violence during the April 19 polling day are National Children's Call Polling Station at 5 by 31 Homan John VA where around 8.30 a.m. on April 19, men with guns were seen driving into the polling station with a four-wheeler where they captured the polling booth for around 30 minutes and few minutes after they left, the angry mob destroyed the EVM machines and a repoll was conducted. In Fall East SP, K Mega Chandra and Central Armed Police Force run to the spot on getting the news, but the army screens shot a 65 years old elderly man. The army screens also captured votes at Bamon Kampu, where the mob there also destroyed the EVM machine to show their discontentment. Vote was also captured, captured at Irilbung Government High School polling station. At Wang Hai Mei Haubam Lampak polling station, around 12 noon, Bharatiya Janata Party Yuva Morka, ex-president Manohar Mayun Baris Sharma and his men intruded the, the Indian National Congress polling office with guns, where they beat up the workers and destroyed the office properties like table and chair. What is astounding is that the police were aware of the incident but took up no action against Baris and his men. Under your report jurisdiction, 10 by 1 Eroy Shemba, 10 by 6 Eroy Shemba Mamang polling station, and 10 by 7 Eroy Shemba Mayai Lekai Eroy Shemba Upper Primary School polling station also reports armed miscreants intrusion during the polling hour, where they beat up the INC polling agents and after which send them out the polling station. Their actions enraged the mob due to which the EVM machine was destroyed and a repoll was conducted. At Hurai Moirang Kampu Sajep Upper Primary School, our miscreants took away the INC polling agents due to which the mob retaliated, leading to the injury of one Hoisnam Sanayaima, 70 years old, who was shot by the armed miscreants. He is now undergoing treatment at Ras Medicity. Polling went smoothly and peacefully today and the poll person was 73.05% as per report at 3 in the evening. A notice had been issued in the name of Khai Huhao Gangte, General Secretary Kuki in Pimanipur, in regards to the false accusation and defamation of CH Zhang Hongsai, President Kuki in Pimanipur, and Pautin Thang Lopeng, Spokesperson Kuki in Pimanipur, on social media platform Facebook group Kuki by Blood, posted by one Mangra Gimang under an anonymous identity on 20 April 2024. Where in another order upon Kim was met by Nampi volunteer Kukilen, telling Kim to clarify about the Facebook within five days failing which Arjun will be carried out in the residence of Kim executives and its office as well. 
The Kim greatly condemns this false accusation and warning made upon it by some anonymous person and group. When the nation is facing such calamity, it is such a shame that we are still falling for our enemy traps. This is not the first time such false and, and proofless accusation is made upon Kim, and it is one of Biren's subordinates' propaganda to dishearten Kim leaders, and such betrayers shall be cursed by the whole nation and should be disowned. Warning made upon Kim leader by Nampi volunteer Cookie Land is quite shocking because patriotic Cookie Village volunteers will never issue such warnings against their leaders, but instead work for the welfare and protection of its citizens and leaders. Their uncivilized behavior will pain the real patriotic Cookie Zoo Village volunteers. Hence, by the order of Cookie in P legal affairs, they are asked to apologize and make a clarification on the on the twenty four. 3rd of April 2024, and he should be accompanied by Nampi volunteer Ko Kilen at Kim's office, Islamka. It is such a shame on how we have the audacity to warn Kim, the apex body, in the name of volunteers from time to time and is already intolerable. The citizens are requested to stop such savage and uncivilized actions. The Naga People's Front NPF has demanded a report in the polling stations falling under Churachanpur and Saikot Assembly constituencies, alleging large-scale boot capturing by armed militants of the district. The election agenda of NPF candidate Timothy Zemik wrote a letter addressed to the returning officer of two outer Manipur parliamentary constituency on Saturday. The letter stated that it has already been widely published by the Kuki community's MLAs and CSOs that a large number of Kuki voters had been displaced to other states and towns, including Mizoram, Assam, Delhi, Kolkata, etc., said the Hills Journal. The Kuki community had been petitioned before the Supreme Court of India to allow those thousands and thousands of internally displaced cookies to allow them to vote but their request was rejected by the court in its final order dated 15-4-2024 in writ petition civil number 243 of 2024 it aided. But the votes of those thousands and thousands of internally displaced people belonging to Kuki community have been casted by impersonation and by boot capturing in various polling stations by the army screens militants groups. The letter elect arguing to ascertain the facts from the CCTV footages installed in the safe polling booths. NPF also alleged that there was a high polling percentage in the polling station situated in Churachanpur town, 58 Churachanpur AC and 59 Saikot AC under Churachanpur district. All their voters and workers were threatened with arms and chased away by the militants, the polling agents said. In regards to the second phase of Lok Sabha election to be conducted on the 26th of April 2024, today at Firjol District, election officer for two assembly constituency underwent final round training at 10 a.m. in Churachanpur Government College. The election officers who were trained are divided into three groups, namely presiding officer, polling officer one, and polling officer two, respectively. The officers who got their final round training were to be on duty at Firjol District and under Tanlon SC jurisdiction, 123 polling officer and presiding officer for 41 polling station. The master trainers taught them using audio-visual demonstration and also how to operate EVM and VVPAT. As per final electoral recording, there are 34,857 voters in Firjol District, out of which 17,794 voters, consisting of 8,903 male voters and 8,891 female voters from 55 to Pai Muk AC and 17,063 voters comprising of 8,535 male voters and 8,528 female voters from 56 Tanlon AC. Second phase of Lok Sabha Outer Manipur constituency election will be conducted on 26 April from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. and in Firjol districts, the votes will be casted at Assembly Segment 55 Tipai Muk, consisting of 37 polling stations, and Assembly Segment 56 Tanlon, consisting of 41 polling stations. For the second phase of Lok Sabha election, 234 polling officers will be on duty at Firjol district. 
There are 13 critical and vulnerable polling stations as well. The polling officers and voting machines and instruments like EVM machine, ballot unit, control unit, and VVPAT to be used in the 55 DPIMO will be airdrop in the morning of 23 April by helicopter at Tuibong Peace Ground, Chorachanpur. Today, the 22nd of April 2024, the Indian Army Joint Forces along with Bisnupur Forest Division jointly campaign in Bisnupur and Chorachanpur district in regards to War Art Day. The campaigners plant trees as a means to survive climate change. They also teach about steps on how to handle and prevent plastic pollution. They have an interactive program with the locals. Today, around 500 tree saplings, which are of different varieties, were planted. The areas where tree saplings were planted are Kumbi, Saiton, and Saiden villages, respectively. The trees are planted with the hope of creating a better, greener, and safer environment, said one of the campaigners, to moderate the climatic change and prevent soil erosion, and also to provide a safe environment for the future generation. These trees are planted, they added. Gopal Biswakarma, a 48-year-old Assam Rifles Jawan from Gopur, passed away in Manipur due to suicide. The incident occurred during the early hours of Sunday, according to sources familiar with the matter. The defense PRO issued a statement revealing that Biswakarma was discovered with a gunshot wound in a pool of blood during the early hours of Sunday while on duty in Manipur's Churachanpur. Originally hailing from Rajabari in Gopur, Biswakarma had devoted his life to serving the nation, having enlisted in the Assam Rifles in 2002. His commitment led him to Manipur, where he was deployed following a 60-day leave that began on April 16. Biswakarma leaves behind an, el an elderly mother, wife, two daughters, and four elder brothers. 58 Churachanpur ACMLA, LM Khaute, which is the victims of storms under his constituency. On the 20th of April 2024, a storm had destroyed many houses and structures in and around Lamka town, and in regards to that, 58 ACMLA, LM Khaute, which is the place that were greatly affected by the storm. He reassured the victims that he will take up the necessary steps so as to compensate them over their loss caused by the storm. The places visited by the MLA and his team are Boliand, Lingsipai, Bisan Mall, D. Laikot, Song Pi Hului, Higgs Gamnom, S. Molhoi, and various others. He also gave relief aid to the victims whose house were destroyed by the storms and reassured them that he will arrange means so as to provide them relief and financial assistance from the government. Third Assam Rifles organized free medical camp at Palbung village under Tengnopal district yesterday where many internally displaced persons took part. Villagers expressed their gratitude towards Third Assam Rifles for extending medical aid at this time of turmoil. They expressed their hope over Assam Rifles to conduct such games in future as well. Not only the Assam Rifles conducted free medical camp, they also distributed medicines free of cost. Mention may be made that the Assam Rifles of the area had also extended help in different ways in the past to the villagers. เฮ็ดดิวขัดซูฮิจไลมุลาฮีฮิตะบังนะโตฮิลกุนจีนฮะจิงฮอฮีเอ่อนิดังผัดดังเตียงซองเลฮิเฮ็ดจิงอวาซ
Amidst an aura of reverence and accomplishment, the Kangpopi Christian Church in Kangpopi Downs to their hills, Kangpopi District, bore witness to the resplendent convergence of 36 valedictory service of True Lock Theological Seminary, or the TTS and the 13th Commencement, Exercise of Restoration Theological College, or the RTS, elevating the occasion to profound significance. Graduation certificates were handed away to four students for the batch of 2023-24 with Master of Theology degree conferred by Martin Luther Christian University, five students with Master of Divinity degree accredited by Asia Theological Association, and nine students with Bachelor of Divinity of Synod of Sirampur College University. True Lock Theological Seminary and Restoration Theological College are unwaveringly committed to empowering dedicated young men and women to passionately serve God and His Church through unparalleled theological education, spiritual growth, and impactful leadership. The seminary founded on July 25, 1983, and the college established during the 33rd Kuki Christian Church Assembly at Kangpokpi on April 15, 16, 2011, stand as beacons for the urgent restoration of humanity and the reconciliation of divided churches, echoing the very essence and missions of the Lord Jesus Christ. The seminary felt a pressing duty to advocate for unity, love, justice, and peace within the church and society, confronting the stark reality of a world plagued by divisions, violence, hatred, corruption, materialism, individualism, and grave existential threats. Since 1983, over 690 students have embarked on their journey beyond graduation. While some have been fear-willed, the overwhelming majority are actively shaping the spiritual and societal landscape of Northeast India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Myanmar through their dedicated ministries. The True Lock Theological Seminary is affiliated to the Synod of Sirampur College, University, West Bengal, with the Restoration Theological College is accredited by Asia Theological Association and associated with Martin Luther Christian University. The splendid ceremony kicked off with the arrival of the graduating students, followed by an invocation by Pastor Ne Cha Chong Loi. Then, Dr. Hem Ko Chon Chong Loi, principal of TTS RTC, delivered a welcoming address and presentation. Dr. T. Lun Kim, at the helm of the Kuki Christian Church Theological Education Board, orchestrated the pivotal moment of degree or diploma conferral with Dr. Hol Kholet Hong Sai in his capacity as the Associate Administrative Secretary of the Kuki Christian Church Assembly, delivered an impassionate valedictory address. Pastor L. Kam Humang Registral and Dr. Hen Hulun Dongal, DPZ Dean, conducted the presentation for TTS graduates and RTC graduates. Meanwhile, Dr. Hem Kuchon Chong Loi, principal of TTS RTC, presented graduation hoods, and Dr. Sat Hokai Chong Loi, AES Kuki Christian Church Manipur Shinod, led the prayer of dedication. The seminary and college bestowed a diverse array of prestigious awards upon graduating students recognizing their achievement across various categories. 
The General Proficiency Prize is awarded to Kim Nae Hol Chong Loi and Zhang Min Lin Kilong, and the All Round Contribution Award is given to Tin Kungam Hauki. Boy Gin Chong Loi received the Language Prize in Hebrew Preliminary and also the Language Prize in Greek Preliminary, along with Sun Khumin Kip Gen, Zhang Min Lin Kilong, and Ti Let Tin Chong Chong Tu were honored with the Theology of Restoration Award and the Promising Preacher Prize, respectively. While Zhang Kulun Kong Sai and Boy Gin Chong Loi earned the academic award in Old Testament and New Testament respectively. Lieutenant Nek Min Lun Kong Sai and Kim Nei Hol Chong Loi were recognized with the academic award in Religious and Kim Nei Hol Chong Loi also received the academic award in Missiology. In light of the unprecedented and the conflict outbreak in Manipur last year, which led to the cancellation of the valedictory service, graduates from the 2022-23 academic session were extended a special invitation to partake in this year's graduation parade. Condemning the attack of the residents of Imagi Meira's convener last night, many women stay to sit in protest at Imo Feeling Petrol Depot today. As per reliable source, at around 9.30 p.m., armed miscreants launched a gun attack on the residents of Imagi Meira's convener T. H. Sujata, said India Today, Northeast. Addressing the press, Sujata stated that her organization had conducted a press conference the previous day, condemning the actions of unknown individuals who had reportedly been roaming, shooting and threatening people, vote rigging on election day. She stated the urgent need for government intervention to apprehend these individuals. Later that same night, an unidentified gunman arrived at her residence and opened fire around 9.15 p.m., discharging three rounds of ammunition. Katwa police subsequently arrived to record statement and investigated the incident, she added. Expressing concern over the ongoing conflict in the region, which has restricted movement out of involved by road for the past 11 months, she highlighted the pressing need for resolution. The convener lamented the fr fracturing of unity within the community due to tensions arising from mass rigging and violence during elections, while maintaining her stance of impartiality. She stressed the importance of identifying the perpetrators with the help of civil society organizations and the general public. In response to the gun attack, residents states a sit in protest to demonstrate their solidarity against violence. The convener reiterated that dialogue remains the key to resolving conflicts within the community, expressing that communication could have helped address the problems and limitations faced by those re resorting to such action. Students with four-year undergraduate degrees can now directly appear for NET and pursue PhD according to University Grants Commission UGC Chairman Jagadesh Kumar. To pursue a PhD with or without a Junior Research Fellowship JRF, the candidates will require a minimum of 75% marks or equivalent grades in their four-year undergraduate course. So far, a candidate for the National Eligibility Test NET needed a master's degree within with a minimum of 55% mark. The candidates with four-year undergraduate degrees can now directly pursue PhD and appear for NET. Such candidates are allowed to appear in a subject in which they want to pursue a PhD irrespective of the discipline in which they have obtained the four-year bachelor's degree in Form Kumar. The candidates having passed a four-year or eight-semester bachelor's degree program should have a minimum of 75% marks in aggregate or, it, or its equivalent grade on a point scale wherever the grading system is followed, the UGC chairman said. A relaxation of 5% marks or its equivalent grade may be allowed for those belonging to SC, ST, OBC, non-creamy layer differently abled economically weaker sections and other categories of candidates as per the decision of the UGC from time to time, he added. The change opens up opportunities for students who have completed a four years bachelor's program to enter the research domain without the intermediary step of obtaining a master's degree. Meanwhile, Registrations for the UGC net June 2024 begin on April 20, 2024, and the last application date is May 10, 2024. Candidates who want to apply for 
net can visit the UGC net official website https colon slash slash ugcnet.nta.sc.in slash the examination fee submission deadline is May 11 to May 12, 2024. The correction window will open on May 13 and be accessible until May 15, 2024. Severe heat wave conditions will continue over East India during the next four days. The India Meteorological Department IMD has forecast that a heat wave will prevail over parts of Odisha today and over West Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh during the next four days. As per news on air, the IMD also said that hot and humid weather will continue over West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Karnataka and Kerala till the 25th of this month. Meanwhile, the weather agency has forecast heavy rainfall with thunderstorms, lightning and gusty winds over northeast India and adjoining regions during the next three days. These conditions will prevail over Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Sikkim, Tripura and West Bengal till Wednesday. Over North India, IMD said that light to moderate rainfall, snowfall, thunderstorms and lightning will descend over Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand today. R Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh will face rainfall, thunderstorms, lightning and gusty winds today. In central India, these conditions will also prevail over Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh for the next two days. In South India, similar conditions will present over Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka and Puducherry tomorrow and over Andhra Pradesh and Telangana till Wednesday. A non-gunman killed two custom officers in western Pakistan, officials said on Sunday, following the killing of five other custom officials in the area in recent days. No group has claimed responsibility for the two attacks since Thursday, which police said they were investigating. Security in regions of Pakistan bordering Afghanistan has deteriorated in recent years. Attacks, some claimed by the Pakistani Taliban, Islamist militant group, have risen, mostly targeting police and security officials. Custom officials were present for checks when a non-person opened fired, said the district deputy superintendent of police, Muhammad Adnan, ad adding that two people were injured and the area on a busy highway had been cordoned off. Three days ago, five officials, including an officer of the customs department, were killed in a shooting in the same area and the attackers escaped, he said. The rise in attacks has escalated tensions between Pakistan and Afghanistan's ruling Taliban administration. Pakistan, saying militants have been using Afghan territory to launch attacks, has called on the Taliban to take action and carried out an airstrike last month on Afghan territory. The Taliban had denied allowing the use of Afghan soil for militancy and said Pakistan security issues are a domestic issue for Islamabad. Explosions echoed over an Iranian city on Friday in what sources describe as an Israeli attack, but Tehran played down the incident and indicated it had no plans for retaliation, a response that appeared to go towards adverting region-wide war. The, lim the limited scale of the attack and Iran's muted response both appear to signal a successful effort by diplomats who have been working round the clock to avert all out war since an Iranian drone and missile attack on Israel last Saturday. Iranian media and officials describe a small number of explosions which they say resulted from Iran's air defenses hitting three drones over the city of Isfahan. Notably, they referred to the incident as an attack by infiltrators rather than by Israel, obviating the need for retaliation. An Iranian official said there were no plans for response against Israel for the incident. The foreign source of the incident has not been confirmed. We have not received any external attack and the decision lends more towards infiltration than attack, the official said. 
Israel said nothing about the incident. It had said for days it was planning to retaliate against Iran for Saturday's strikes, the first ever direct attack on Israel by Iran in the case of Sado war waged by proxies which has escalated throughout the Middle East through six months of battle in Gaza. The United States received advance notice of Israel's reported strike on Iran but did not endorse the operation or play any part in its execution, U.S. media quoted officials as saying. NBC and CNN citing sources familiar with the matter and a U.S. official, respectively, said Israel had provided Washington with pre-notification of the strike. Various networks cited officials confirming a strike had taken place inside Iran, with CNN quoting one official as stating the target was not a nuclear facility. The two long-standing foes had been heading toward direct confrontations since a presumed Israeli airstrike on April 1 that destroyed a building in Iran's embassy compound in Damascus and killed several Iranian Damascans, Iranian officers including a top general. Iran's response with a direct attack on Israel was unprecedented but caused no deaths and only minor damage because Israel and its allies shot down hundreds of missiles and drones. Allies including the United States had since been pressing her to ensure any further retaliation would be calibrated not to provoke a spiral of hostilities. The British and German foreign ministries visited Jeru Jerusalem this week and Western countries tightened sanctions on Iran to mo mollify Israel. In a sign of pressure within Israel's hard-right government for a stronger response, Itamar Ben-Javir, the far-right national security minister, tweeted a single word for after Friday's stride, feeble. Countries around the world called on Friday for both sides to advert further escalation. It is absolutely necessary that the region remain stable and that all sides restrain from further action, EU Commission head Ursula von der Leyen said. Similar calls from the Basin and from Arab states in the region. In financial markets, global shares ease, oil, oil prices surge and U.S. bond yields fell as traders worried about the risk. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.